major, major sports car racing news breaking late today. Tuesday, breaking news on a Tuesday. What are you doing, Porsche? But yes, Porsche will be returning to Le Mans and they will be doing it in the LMDH subcategory of the converged prototype cat class that will be uh, supposedly racing in both IMSA and the World Endurance Championship. And there are several important factors here with Porsche choosing the LMDH platform over the LMH hypercars that are more geared towards the European side of things in the World Endurance Championship, though there is, of course, plans to have those cars racing in America at least on a limited basis. Of course, Porsche is one of the most successful sports car manufacturers in history. 19 overall wins of the 24 Hours of Le Mans. As we stand right now, the Porsche media site is completely crashed. Uh, if that tells you anything about how important this is, not only to the brand Porsche, uh, to its identity, but also to the people who support and are interested in Porsches. Uh, nothing against Formula E, well, <laughs> nothing against Formula E, but when Porsche announces they are going to Le Mans, it is a major, major, major deal. And this seems like it's going to be a major, major program. We saw the previous Porsche prototype program, which was the uh, 919 Hybrid. A uh, very expensive car, only ever run by factory teams and only ever run in the World Endurance Championship. We don't have a ton of details right now uh, about Porsche's plans. We just know that they, yes, indeed, are building a car. They will be joining Audi currently confirmed in the LMDH subclassification in prototype uh, starting in 2023. Acura Honda is also looking at joining that subcategory as well and apparently several other uh, manufacturers. Now with this announcement there are several several key details that we don't know yet in terms of Porsche's commitment. We don't know for sure if they're going to do customer teams yet though the LMDH formula in particular uh, is much closer to what is currently in DPI in IMSA, where, yes, there are factory teams, but the costs are low enough and the competition is close enough through the balance of performance that manufacturers aren't afraid to uh, allow their technology into the hands of privateers. We don't know if Porsche will allow customer teams. Uh, there have been long-standing rumors that one of the teams, and certainly the team that's going to compete on this side of the Atlantic, will be Team Penske. But that was not confirmed today. We also don't know what the engine combination will be. Uh, I would certainly hope that uh, we will see uh, something similar to what is in a 911. Uh, a flat six would be awesome. It would sound great too. Uh, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Uh, the 919 hybrid, which was the last... Uh, prototype that they produced had I think a, a, a V4 so that was definitely a weird co engine I wonder if uh, if there was some technology maybe they could they could uh, dumb down a little bit and get it into a an LMDH prototype we'll have to see we don't know what uh, chassis constructor they're going with obviously there are four approved LMDH chassis constructors those being Orica, Ligier, Multimatic and Delara um you would assume that Orica is probably on the top of the list, uh, much the same way. I don't remember, I don't think Audi's committed to a manufacturer either, come to think of it, a chassis manufacturer, though you would think that Delara would probably be their, their number one choice, considering their previous ties to Delara, uh, not only in Formula E, but also when you go back to the, uh, the R18s, which were produced by Delara. Uh, so I would think that given Penske's experience with Orica and the Orica chassis, maybe that would be the direction they would go. But of course, Acura is also looking to go in that direction. So maybe uh, maybe we'll see two different prototypes based on the same chassis, which would be uh, very interesting because I, I have a suspicion that, that Acura and Porsche 
would go in uh, fairly vast different directions in terms of what their cars would look, sound, and, and perform like. Um, that is the other thing, or there's at least a couple of things, kind of meta things to talk about here with Porsche. Because, uh, number one, and I said this with Audi, there was some concern, especially on this side of the Atlantic, with the ACO not playing nice with a formula that was going to be primarily focused on the United States. We've seen that with DPI in the past. We've seen it with Daytona prototypes. Well, we've seen it with our LMP1 cars that we had. Ordinarily did not get uh, equal treatment when they went over to uh, race in the 24 hours of Le Mans. With Audi and Porsche committing uh, to the LMDH category with Toyota, Peugeot, and a couple of privateers, Glickenhaus and, and uh, Baikal is committing to the LMH hypercar uh, subcategorization. This is so confusing. <laughs> this is so confusing, by the way. I just want to... Ugh. Sports car racing. Uh, I'm, I'm so excited about all these manufacturers, but good Lord, just have prototype, you know? Uh, and then just let... Yeah, whatever, whatever. That's a rant. But the... I've lost my train of thought. I've regained my train of thought. The purpose of... Or the, the main advantage of having Audi and Porsche commit to the American formula will give other manufacturers, particularly ones that are on this side of the Atlantic now, like Mazda, like Cadillac, and certainly Acura, because they're already making the moves to have an LMDH car ready, ready to go for 2023, it will give them the confidence that the original agreement, which was convergence between LMH and LMDH, will actually take place. Uh, I think we were all concerned about that, and now that there are two solid European manufacturers with serious Le Mans credibility, I think those concerns are now out the window. The other problem is, and again it goes back to the having two subcategories within a category that you're going to BOP, and BOP, if you don't know what that is, is balance of performance. So prototype racing, especially at the top level, has almost always been... Uh, open competition, meaning you can go out and you can, if your car is slow, you can develop it, develop it as much as you want with no cost cap, and what you show up with at the racetrack is what you show up with. Of course, the what happens usually is, you see what happens in Formula One, this also happens in uh, sports car racing, is the best car will continue to have money put into it, and it will develop and continue to get faster and faster and faster than the competition, and that gap will ordinarily widen. Not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, I'm a purist, but the problem is for manufacturers is the cost. Even if you're running up front, even if you have the best car, the pressure is still there to continue to develop because Porsche never knew if Toyota was going to come with a car that was uh, two seconds faster than it had been the previous year. So it was in Porsche's best interest to always continue to try to gain as much as they could because they didn't know what the other uh, competitors were doing. It's a double-edged sword, though. As we've seen in the past in sports car racing, with balance of performance, particularly in classes that are very manufacturer and pro-driver centric, we have seen some serious shenanigans go on. I rem I'm reminded of either, I think it was two years ago now, at the 24 Hours of Le Mans, Aston Martin qualified on the pole in GTE Pro. They were BOP'd between qualifying and the race, and the pole sitting front row cars dropped like a rock in the race and were not even close to being competitive. That kind of ridiculous nonsense, and I hate to be this blunt, but that kind of stuff will ruin this. It will ruin everyone's enjoyment of it. So I, I would hope that A, the BOP is fair uh, and completely, I guess, I guess egalitarian would be the wrong word, uh, administered equally. I don't want to see any preferential treatment or at the same time, if a car shows up, say at Le Mans, and that car uh, happens to be faster and, and there wasn't really anything screwy in the BOP that, you know, would have obviously meant that the car was, it's like, you know, if, if, 
if someone like me can look at the BOP adjustments and go, okay, yeah, that looks fairly even, and somebody comes out there, say Audi or Porsche, and they're a second faster than everybody else, are you going to BOP them so that the rest of the field comes back to them, or are you going to allow uh, the, the best prepared team, the best setup, the best car to win the 24 hours of Le Mans? That's what I'm worried about where we sit right now. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But I, I, I am worried that the political element of the sport will kind of come into effect. And when uh, certain manufacturers or at certain races say they're racing at Hockenheim, and suddenly the Audis and the Porsches are up front. They race at Le Mans, and suddenly, hey, oh, hey, look, Peugeot's out front. They race at Sebring, suddenly the Acuras are out front. You know, it's, <laughs> I'm worried that's going to be the way it goes, and I hope I'm wrong. I hope they are very hands-off with the BOP adjustments. I hope they make one at the start of the season and then tweak it just a little bit. I hope they nail it right off of the bat. The cars are even enough, but have some wiggle room. And they need to also realize, of course, that, that not every track is going to have, especially when you're talking about different engine combinations, different chassis combinations, different aerodynamic combinations, not every track is going to favor every single car. I so hope... Because if they get this right, this is going to be the this is going to be a golden era of sports car racing. If they get it wrong, it's going to be so frustrating to watch. So I'm excited. I am excited. Uh, certainly Porsche coming in, especially if they're doing customer cars, and especially if they have a factory program on both sides of the Atlantic and WEC and IMSA, that would be absolutely fantastic. But again, details are sparse right now. All we know is that it's coming. And uh, I'm very excited to see it come. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Hope you've enjoyed two uploads today. Hey, maybe I'll have something to upload tomorrow. That's why you got to subscribe, right? We'll see you in the next video.